Welcome back to another cool tool show and tell. Today my guest is Ryan Jenkins. Ryan is a constructionist educator who explores ways for learners to engage with science, art, and technology. He's a co-founder of Wonderful Idea Co., a design studio that builds playful exhibits and leads professional development workshops and develops new prototypes. Ryan, thanks for joining me today. Cool. Hi, Donald. Great to be here. All right. And you've brought something uh, to show us that I'm excited to hear your opinion on. Uh, talk cool. to me about what you brought. Cool. So the tool I brought today is a, a hobby gear motor. So this is a, a really flexible uh, motor that can be embedded in all sorts of tinkering projects. Um, it's kind of an upgrade to the a simple hobby motor, which... Um, looks a little bit like this. I've put a little hot glue stick on for vibrating, but this is just a really fast motor that you can power with a um, AA battery and it will just move really fast. The cool thing about these gear motors is that they basically have that uh, fast moving part, mm -hmm. but then they also have two hubs that move more slowly, which can really open up the possibilities for different types of projects. Yeah, the motion is pretty slow. I think that's the the surprising thing. If you've ever seen those the the bare gear motor going, or not not gear motor, the hobby motor going, they spin ridiculously quickly, but they don't have a lot of power. And if you ever want to turn that speed down, aside from adjusting the voltage of your battery down, um, you can't get that slower turntable motion kind of effect, right? Uh, the geared version of it is what uh, gives you the magic of being able to do the slower moving projects. Yeah, exactly. Because if you try to um, use a resistor or something like that for a regular motor to slow it down, not only do you change the speed, but you also uh, get the power to be a, bun a much lower. And so for us to have these connected into projects that um, are made of cardboard or wood, of recycled materials, it's really important that this motor has enough strength to actually um, move the machine or uh, move something that is a little bit heavy. I was just going to say that there's a few different flavors of this too. Like I, I know on my own little motor bin over here, I've seen some that have like a shaft on both sides, some that have a shaft on, just on one side, um, some that have the motor pin sticking out a little bit more. Is the, the one that you're showing off here, is that the, the particular flavor of the gear motor that you like? And maybe tell me why, why it works yeah. for you. So now I, now I actually have it spinning so you can see it. I finally got the battery connected right. Um, yeah, I like this just because it's the most flexible. Um, so this has two slow moving hubs and then one fast moving um, uh, shaft in the, in the middle of the motor. And to me, from all the different versions that I've seen, um, this one just allows the most flexibility. So, um, there's, you know, depending on where you want to put this motor in the project, you can have your uh, wheel or, or foot moving on one side or the other. Um, also, sometimes it is nice to have um, the fast part of the motor easily accessible um, to add some vibration or to um, have a part of the project that's moving and shining really fast. So I think for me, really the idea is that the more flexibility you have with these motors, the, the, the wider the walls and the, and the bigger the possibilities are that people can design their own ideas and their own projects out of them. Great. And then pricing wise, uh, the link you showed me is your, a pair of them for around $4. Is that pretty typical? Yeah, it's been actually it's kind of been fluctuating up and down over the last year or so, as I think a lot of electronics also have. But um, it seems that they're about two dollars a motor, which, again, is is at the price range where um, you really can prototype and test and um, bring these into your projects. I think when you're working with with kids or adults, um, you don't want them to think that the materials are so precious um, you want them to feel comfortable to uh, try try new ideas, try weird things, um, you know, mount this with, with tape or glue on different parts and really experiment to see what it goes. So for me, having a, 
a reliable, slow moving motor um, that's not so expensive really opens up the possibilities of what pe- what types of tinkering projects people can work on. Right. That's so, so affordable that if you need to just hot glue something directly to it, you could do it and not feel that bad about the two dollars that went into it. Right. Yeah, it, yeah, exactly. Um, although what's what is really cool is that um, these also last quite a while. Like they're they're pretty robust. And in fact, um, if you want, like, so if it does break, you can um, kind of undo this plastic piece and switch out this motor for a replacement one. Mm-hmm. So the. Even though they aren't so expensive, they will last a while, and you can even repair or fix them if it's not working anymore. Right. Um, we just did a project where uh, kids were making wood and wire automata, and then using these motors to um, to uh, kind of keep the motion going on their projects. And we just connected this to the wooden block with um, zip ties and rubber bands. And so people could have the experience of prototyping and tinkering. But then when they were done, we could take all the parts away, save these motors for the next type of project we're working on. That's great. And uh, remind me, I I feel like the the two different hubs, they spin in opposite directions. Is that right? Um, I'm pretty sure they spin in the same direction, but let's see to make sure. yeah, so they spin in they spin in the same direction for each other. Yeah. But like all motors, if you um, switch the direction of the battery, you can um, change the direction of the motor. So um, it's going to be like I need four hands to do this. But um, if I have it uh, spinning this way, it's going to spin. I guess well, it looks like counterclockwise to me. And then if I uh, switch the positive and negative terminals on the battery, it's going to start spinning the opposite direction. Um, this also can be um, accomplished with uh, with switches or with programming. So the cool th- one cool thing about this motor is you can um, create a switch or create a program to switch the direction. So you can really use these in complex programmed uh, robotics ideas to make, um, you know, moving vehicles or or boats or cars or, or different types of animals and um, affect the direction for which they move. Right. And one thing I've I've noticed the the more I encounter them now or I've seen them in other people's projects is that they're such a standard size now that I've seen 3D printed adapters for it or things that will yeah. make use of the the like the the uniform uh, nature mm-hmm. of where the the mounting holes are on those and you can you can build some pretty sophisticated yeah. stuff if you know that that and is going to be an element that the, the size of it doesn't change depending yeah, on and even if- even it's common enough that I don't know if you've experimented at all with um, Tinkercad or Tinkercad circuits, mm-hmm. but this is a part that's inside Tinkercad. So you can actually um, import this shape into your project and design something that uh, is a mount or is something that actually fits this right into the project. Um, but it's also simple enough. There's a little um, hole on here where you can screw a piece a uh, piece of wood or a piece of cardboard or a piece of plastic onto this. So you can, I guess, go really in-depth with um, custom 3D printed designs. But also if you're just using um, masking tape and cardboard and hot glue, uh, you can also make some really interesting and cool projects. All right. That's a great tip. One other thing I wanted just to check to see if this is something that you, you meant to include is the... Um the pre-wiring of these, like I've seen them before where the mm. hobby motors kind of just have the little tabs that you could solder onto. I, I, I imagine that you're pointing out that the pre-wired versions of these are the ones that are kind of the best ones to go for. Yeah. And, um, there's a, that's, that's interesting that you brought it up. I, I don't have all the different versions that we've made, but, um, the one that you buy just comes with these, um, DuPont connectors, mm-hmm. which uh, are kind of a standard uh, electronics connector. Um, they work fine with um, just programming or just connecting straight to a battery, but they also work if you want to um, connect it to a breadboard or connect it to uh, a, a computerized cable. One thing that we did uh, for some of the projects that we are working on, just having battery power, is actually snipping off these connectors 
and adding in a ring terminal so that it would really uh, be secured straight onto the motor. Got it. Um, but yeah, I think for me, um, you know, like I know all educators and teachers and uh, people who are running after school programs don't have so much uh, free time always. So uh, it's usually worth it to spend the extra few, you know, few cents per motor to get the wires already soldered on mm -hmm. just because, I mean, at least for me, when I'm running a class or doing a workshop, I want to kind of get the parts and really focus on the prompts and examples, what the kids are doing versus the small little, like spending two hours connecting wires to the motor. Perfect. Great recommendation, Ryan. And where, <laughs> where can people find out more about what you're doing and, uh, and wonderful idea co? Cool. So you can go on our website. It's wonderfulidea.co. We're also posting a lot of stuff on social media, on Instagram or Twitter, at Wonderful Idea Co. And for us, we're doing lots of classes and camps and workshops for educators. And we're always sharing about the behind the scenes and the process of what we're doing. We uh, want a lot of input and feedback. And we'd love if people checked out our website and uh, got in touch and told us, what ideas they have, what questions they have, what's interesting about the type of tinkering and making projects that we're working on. All right, great. Thanks again for joining me today, Ryan, cool. and a great recommendation on those motors. Cool, thanks, yeah, I hope a lot of people um, you know, do some fun projects and, and share it back with us. So thanks, Donald.